Hey, this is Big Guy DIY coming to you with a project that I'm working on, but I'm not really doing a. Um, this video is really not showing you how to do something because there's so many out there, but just a video of what I've been up to. So I've been helping a friend rebuild the deck. His old deck was coming apart, it was rotting out, it was not made with pressure treated wood whatsoever. So they hired me to tear down the old deck and build them a new one. So I'm going to show you what I got done so far. So this deck here originally came out to approximately here. And we got the roof here, which I got temporarily supported. Uh, none of this wood is pressure treated. So I'm kind of battling with carpenter bees drilling holes into this lumber up here versus uh, if it was pressure treated up there we wouldn't have an issue. This was originally a screened in porch so we, we tore all that down as you can see and then I just put in some temporary uh, posts to hold it. <clears throat> so the width of the deck is 16 feet and the length is 22 feet when I get my second timber added to the outside here. The original deck was not attached to the house, but the guy did um, galvanized pipes and welded them and created a frame. And then he rested the wood on top of it and then had some like spikes coming up that were welded to the piping coming up through the wood and they bent the top of the spike over to hold the wood in place. That also included holding this up. So the deck was never attached to the house. So what I had to do after ripping it all down, install the ledger. My ledger here is all uh, anchored into the foundation. As you can see, maybe 12 inches on center. And then in between, here, here are my joists, which are 16 inch on center. The problems we are running into, which I figured out a way to fix it, is this. No space to secure the uh, rim joist on the back side. We just have this uh, nails where we put in here. So I'm going to do a little, I don't call it a trick, but I'm going to do something different to secure both boards against this ledger so we won't have any issues. Uh, all my legs are through bolted. So what I do on the legs is I cut into them so there's a step. And so this outside rim joist sits on the leg as well as is being held with the bolts. This one here, the foot will be anchored into the cement and then it will be through bolted to the ledger. Um, not sure which one, I haven't decided yet. So, this is where I'm at so far on doing this. What was interesting is we can't buy lumber over 16 feet at our box stores. So in order for make for me to make this one solid piece at 22 feet, we had to use three pieces, 16 footers, and I had to cut them to length. And then what I use is uh, liquid nails, zigzagged all the way down. And then every about 12 to 14 inches, uh, using my nail gun framing nail gun and frame nailed the whole thing so the part that's frame nailed faces on the inside so when we come to the outside we don't see any nails I wanted a clean look when I installed this hence that's why I did these uh, type of through bolts because it's a much cleaner look and you can see the legs are all sitting on a, a foot so if water clicks 
underneath or it gets wet underneath there it does not get soaked up by the bottom of the foot so today I'm gonna finish this piece out here uh, maybe work on these three legs here for this corner for this support that goes on best both sides and then I got a cross member that's going in here and a cross member that goes in here because that cross member has to support this roof so this is gonna be a double joist and this one from here to here is gonna be a double joist as well not as important in regards to load capacity as it is for this one but this one's very important so that's where I'm at I did a, a time-lapse video so I'll have that follow this video so you can kind of see what was involved um, the reason why we have all stone on the bottom here we have groundhogs skunks and other critters that like to dig holes underneath our decks so what we're doing here is we put down an inch and a half to two inches of stone throughout the whole thing then we're going to take cement and sprinkle it all over the place cover this whole thing up spray it with water and that cement will harden on top of this stone and the critters won't be able to dig through it uh, a little trick i figured out a while back so let me do that repair in this corner and i'll show you what i did to uh support that so we won't have any issues of this joist ever being pulled away from the house
All right, let me explain what I've done here. <coughs> what we have here is your regular double joist hanger. This is what it looks like. So when these are installed, these here are you use your joist uh, nails to go on both sides. And then your joist nails go in here, which go into your joist, or in this case, it's called a rim joist. These are doubled rim joists, two by tens. Um, the problem we have is with this in place, we cannot get our hands in here if we were on a through bolted or secure it in any way to get this second joist. So, I modified this hanger before I put it in. I put two holes in the bottom. What that allowed me to do, dug a hole here, and with a um, right angle drill, I was able to install two screws up through the bottom of this joist. See the holes? Up into, uh, I went up to two inches into the bottom of the joist and the bottom of the second choice. Then we did our usual joist hanger nails. Uh, here, 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 there, there, you know, as I say. But to me, just nailing one side in a single screw in this is not enough. So what I did is, these are heavy duty L brackets. I use two and a half inch lag screw, galvanized, inch and a half lag screw galvanized because my ledger is only an inch and a half thick so with the thickness of my um, L bracket that'll pull it enough just enough away that when the lag screw goes in it does not hit the cement so that's intentional and these are all galvanized these are well, I think I said two and a half so I'm going the two by tens which is really three inches, so two and a half. I'm going, I'm going in a little more, a little less than halfway into the wood. So that's my secured, my way of securing this 22 foot long rim joist to the house. And that was my workaround to try to secure this thing. So hopefully it gives some people an idea if they run into a problem when they can't secure it to the house correctly. All right, on uh, to the rest of this project. So to end the video, the vlog too, I'm gonna call it for building the deck. Um, this is Big Guy DIY signing off, Robert. Uh, next video coming out is I'll be installing the, uh, the remaining feet and I'll show you what I did on those, how they're installed or the remaining legs that are going down to the footings. And then also I've started installing the floor joists. So I'll show you what I'm doing that and I'll show you a little thing that I do with installing floor joists because I'm doing like, well, I had help with the rim joists because of the weight of a 22 foot beam, it's pretty heavy. And then I had some uh, help with the cross members the double joist going across um, just because of alignment. We had alignment issues. The um, thing I don't like about pressure treated wood is it twists or warps very quickly within a couple days of buying it. And that kind of gripes me. So when I was putting the cross members in, <clears throat> there was a lot of muscling of trying to twist the wood back so my joist would end flush with it versus being gaps you know front or back or a top or bottom on it so end this video this is big guy diy uh next one will be vlog three on the deck take care